everyone. Welcome to this wealthmanagement.com fast chat. I'm Shannon Rossick. No two advisors are alike, let alone their journey to get where they are today. I'm fortunate enough to be joined by Jaretha Peters, Executive Director and Area Manager, Georgia Market at Wells Fargo Advisors to hear her story. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Shannon. Absolutely. So let's dive right in. Jaretha, can you tell us about your current role and the path you took to ultimately get here? Well, thank you so much again for the opportunity to share. You see, Shannon, my role getting to leadership has been pretty unique. Um, I started in the financial services industry about 23, four years ago, um, serving in so many different capacities. And I joined Wells Fargo in 2017 as a financial advisor. Understanding that I wanted to make some career choices and changes, you know, I raised my hand and just, you know, shared with my leadership that I was interested in becoming more of a leader. And, you know, I began on a journey of different types of uh, activities and trainings and ultimately landed a role as a branch manager. And then now subsequently as an executive director and an area manager within Wells Fargo Advisors. So it sounds like leadership really called to you. Can you talk about how the leaders you worked with and the culture at Wells Fargo Advisors has helped you carve out that path? You know, Shannon, it's kind of important to note that, you know, my journey has had, you know, some challenges and setbacks. And as a single mother, I didn't have the opportunity to sometimes take the risk that some of my peers did. And so having those candid conversations, which are, you know, a, a normal um, practice and behavior here at Wells Fargo, my leaders were able, able to understand, you know, what it was that I really wanted to look forward toward the future, creating a pathway for myself and, you know, for my family. And so they took that time to, number one, understand me, understand what I wanted for my future. And then it helped me explore the channel optionality that lies within Wells Fargo. That's one of the things that the leaders here understand is important to each and every one of us as team members is giving us the power of choice and choosing whichever pathway we feel is best and giving us the, the latitude to explore it. Well, having that flexibility is certainly crucial uh, to, to your success. So could you share some examples of things happening at the firm today to help continue to reinforce that that culture and set diverse advisors really up to succeed? So that's a great question. Unlike some of the other firms that I, I was at, the experience has been very different. At Wells Fargo, it's very commonplace to be paired with mentors for guidance. Um, we have advocate coaches that are dedicated to whatever diverse population um, that they're assigned. And that's through coaching conversations, you know, attending peer industry um, conferences, sharing news articles, just even phone regular, you know, regular phone conversations picking up the phone, checking in. There are so many ways that here at Wells Fargo Advisors, our leaders stay connected to each and every one of the advisors in such a way that you feel comfortable, you feel included, you feel like you have a place and you belong. You know, moreover, we also have great leadership that's encouraging us to adopt new technology and all the other things that are going to lead for success becoming members of, you know, some of the industry um, organizations that will help give us a networking opportunity. I mean, it's just so much, Shannon. I can't even think of it all in this moment to share because I've been fortunate enough to participate in almost all of them. Um, and it's helped build my career here at Wells Fargo. Well, it's very clear you've taken the initiative to really nurture your talent over time, despite some of the challenges that you you just mentioned. But how has Wells Fargo Advisors culture helped you be able to better connect with diverse advisors and, like I said, nurture talent over time? So there are a couple of key things that Wells Fargo Advisors recognize. Number one, that your your marketing and who you reach, you know, they're more apt to do business with you. They, you know, they look like you. So we have specific uh, marketing efforts to make sure that advisors are supported to market in a way that's consistent with who they are and how they value themselves in, as an advisor, but also in the communities they serve. So we a lot, you know, business development dollars because we understand that that additional marketing expense for a diverse advisor may be, you know, sometimes a, a a barrier and making you want to consider staying in this industry. And so the firm allocates that on an annual basis to each and every diverse advisor. Um, also, we do tier practice management. So those are investments that the firms say, hey, 
based upon where you are. It's like an a la carte menu. You get to choose what support, what that looks like, design it for your success and create your own pathway. And then we've got the advocate coaches that wrap that support around their, their support around your choice and, you know, launch into the D. And have you had a mentor or a leader that's really impacted your your growth and just your career, uh, career trajectory? I would love to hear a little bit more about that. You know, it's funny that you ask because I recently was named the executive director um, area manager role and about... Congratulations. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, and it really started from a conversation I had with a leader at one of our divisional meetings. He's our divisional leader. He sat down, he listened to me, and he said, hey, I want to connect you with these people for people for mentorship and understanding about where you want to go and explore some opportunities that may um, come up. That was very different for me, Shannon. Oftentimes, leaders don't want their employees or their team members to even consider going somewhere else because of the fear of I've got to replace them. What's that going to, you know, how's that going to impact the business? And that's not been the case here at Wells Fargo Advisors. It's been quite the opposite. You know, we have created a platform to support diverse advisors, to give them the optionality to choose to grow bigger as a financial advisor, pause, go into leadership or some combination of both leadership and being a financial advisor. And so having the opportunity, firsthand experience, sitting down with a leader, having him just listen to, you know, I'm just an ideation, just thinking, I don't even know what I want, but I think this is what I want, right? Um, he provided me that safe space to just blab at the mouth what I thought I wanted. And based upon what he heard and what he understood, he aligned the resources that were in place with a conversation for me to continue to have until I landed this opportunity um, as an executive director, area manager. Well, I love hearing that you've had such a positive experience, but I want to look ahead a little bit uh, and looking okay. into the future. What do you think firms need to do to keep providing the support their advisors need, especially as we know, the needs of clients are changing, they're more demanding. Um, how does this all evolve? You know, I think firms, number one, need to continue listening, you know, listening to both their advisors and to their clients, making sure they're not missing out on the opportunity to evolve with the demands. It's as simple as that. I think sometimes we overcomplicate <laughs> the process, but I don't think it has to be that way. You know, also keeping it, you know, a close ear to what the regulatory changes are, some of the product and industry changes, and packaging it in a way that advisors and or leaders can digest it and create success around those different models. You know, as leaders, we have the responsibility, you know, to our clients, to our communities, you know, to our team members to make sure that we're developing the skill set around being active listeners. And I think that has been some of the success that leaders have had in Wells Fargo Advisors about retracting and retaining talent is because they take time to listen and understand. Well, Jaretha, thank you so much for sharing your journey and experiences. And congratulations again on the recent promotion. Thank you. Obviously very well deserved based on what you told me today and just truly appreciate your insights. It's been a pleasure. Likewise, Shannon. Thank you so much for having me.